Hi, in my previous video I have demonstrated how to create an installer project using a Wix framework. In this one I'm going to show you another option uh, to create an installer using Microsoft Visual Studio installer. Here I have a solvers add-in which I'm going to create installer for. Let me start with navigating to extensions and updates and I'm going to look for Visual Studio installer. Just click download and install the package. To make the uh, installing project easier, it is recommended to close the current session of Visual Studio. It usually takes a few minutes to install that extension. Now it is complete and I'm just going to start a Visual Studio session. I will add new project to my solution, which is going to be my installer project. So when extension is installed, it adds new template under the other project types, Visual Studio installer. I will select setup project and specify the name for my installer. So at first step, I'm going to add the libraries and required com registration to my add-in. So I can just go to add project output, select my primary project from the list, which is going to be the project for my add-in and just pick up the primary output option. So as you can see now uh, it loads my uh, primary output plus some dependencies. Some of the dependencies might be missing because my project was never rebuilt. So when I rebuild it now, I should be able to refresh my dependencies to see all the required files. So here it is. So this step will not only add my files to the install directory, but also will register my add-in as a com object, which is required for SolidWorks add-ins. Now I'll start to modify the properties of my installer and filling some attributes. So I will start with author attribute. In order to add the icon to the installer, I'm going to add the resources into my project. So here I have a resources files and I'm just going to add them together into my project. So now I can refer that icon in my add remove program icon attribute. So I click browse and I'm going to select uh, to look at the application folder and here's my icon. Let's continue and fill more attributes. So here I'm going to change the manufacturer of that product. Set the product name. Change the platform of the installer to be 64-bit instead of 32-bit. And finally set the title. I would recommend to keep the version of installer in sync with the version of the assembly as it is specified here. So I'm just going to change it to 0.0.2, .0 which is the current version of my product. I will ignore this message for now because it's the first version of my installer and I will explain to you later what it means. Now let's customize the pages of my installer. So I'm just going to click right mouse button uh, on the installer project and select the user interface option into the context menu. Here you can see all of the pages and their order of my installation process. I can customize them. So now I'm just going to add the banner image to each of those pages. So similarly, we added the icon. You can browse them directly from the resources. It is possible to add some extra pages into the install project. So for example, I'm going to add new dialect for end user license agreement. I will change the order of the page to appear just after the welcome page and I'm going to browse the banner image and the content of the EULA in rich text format. And as a final step, I need to add registry keys so solvers can recognize my add-in. I can go to the registry view and I can create few registry keys here. I need to add the GUID of my add-in under the local machine, software, SOLIDWORKS, add-ins. So I'm just going to change this to SOLIDWORKS. I will create subkey called add-ins and I'll create another subkey which will be the name of my add-in GUID. I need to add the default value to be equal to 1 and I need to add the title attribute and description attribute. Those are the ones which are going to be shown uh, in your tools add-ins dialog in SOLIDWORKS. When you're developing the add-in, those keys usually register to within the registration functions, like here. So I just want to add one more key into the Ash key current user, and it's going to be a key which is responsible for add-in startup. 
So I'm just going to change this to SolidWorks. Create add and startup subkey. Copy the GUID of my add and as another subkey and add the default value equal to 1. So this will tell SolidWorks to load my add and by default on the first start. I can now compile the project and run the installer. So as you can see, we have a banner at the top of our installer. We have a EULA page. You can browse the default location and run the installation process. Now let's start SolidWorks and see that our add-in is installed. This message comes from the add-in, so it looks like it's all installed correctly. So I can open a PAR document and can open the Stockmaster toolbar from my add-in and just make sure that everything works correctly. This tool is supposed to add bounding cylinder around the geometry and I can see it is added so everything works correctly. Let me close SolidWorks and show you how to release a new version of the add-in and new installer so a user can update. We will start by modifying something in our add-in. So in this case I will just simply rename my button. So it, let it be stock fit geometry instead of a stock master. I want to increase the version of the add-in to put it to 0.0.3 .0 and when I do it, it recommends me to update my product code. Changing the product code for every new version by keeping the upgrade code the same would allow user with existing installation to update without the need to uninstall previous version. It is also important to change the assembly version of the changed DLLs, otherwise the installer will not update correctly. So I will just rebuild my project, rebuild the installer and update my existing installation. Let me now run the update. So I can simply uh, start the installer and install it as usual. So as you can see, I do not need to uninstall previous version from that system. Let's start SolarWorks and make sure that the version has been successfully updated. So I'm just going to browse to the toolbar and as you can see, it has been renamed. Please follow the link in the description of this video for more information. Thank you for your time.